Um, so this is going to be a joint presentation between uh, myself and Rob. Um, since we're a joint monitoring program, we'll make our joint presentation. And I'll start uh, the ball rolling with a description of the definitions and indicators that uh, we've been using for, for water sanitation and hygiene. So in um, last summer, in 2017, the JMP published its first report of the SDG period, uh, which presented the new indicators as well as baselines. And you can see in this uh, slide a summary of the different indicators that we report on, um, organized into different ladders. So if you look at the drinking water ladder on the left and the sanitation ladder in the middle, they both consist of five rungs, where the bottom two rungs are quite similar to the MDG rungs. You have surface water or unimproved uh, water sources and open defecation or unimproved sanitation facilities. Uh, but the top rungs are a little bit different. They're broken up into limited, basic, and safely managed services. And we'll, we'll share definitions of those in the coming slides. It's worth noting, though, that um, the new safely managed indicators at the top of the ladders um, correspond directly to the SDG targets 6.1 and 6.2. Um, target 6.2 also refers to open defecation, so, so that indicator is also relevant there. But target uh, 1.4 under the SDG goal 1 on poverty sp speaks of universal access to basic services and uh, the water sanitation and hygiene ladders all contribute to um, tracking progress towards that target. The other thing that's quite new is having a hygiene ladder at all. Um, hygiene wasn't part of the MDG uh, monitoring framework, so we're very pleased to have uh, that in the SDG framework and we ended up putting that on the cover of our report. So let's look at the indicators and definitions for the drinking water ladder. Um, again, surface water and unimproved drinking water sources are quite the same as in the MDGs. Uh, but in the MDGs, when we spoke of use of improved water sources, um, so people using improved water sources now can be uh, grouped into those having limited, basic, or safely managed services, where limited services um, are use, people using an improved source but one for which uh, collection time exceeds 30 minutes for a round trip, including queuing. So there's a time element there. Um, if the collection time is less than 30 minutes, then that is, is counted as a basic service and counts toward SDG target 1.4. But this new uh, indicator of safely managed drinking water services then uh, includes uh, several new elements. It's, it's uh, drinking water from an improved source but one that's located on premises, available when needed, and free from fecal and priority chemical contamination. And you can see this graphic shows that those three different elements should really all be present uh, in order for a service to be counted as safely managed. So of course that has implications for new kinds of data and um, certainly the, the, the proportion of people who are covered with a safely managed service is going to be um, rather lower compared to the proportion of people having basic services. So at the global level and um, then focusing on the rural situation, we can use this kind of bar chart to look at those different levels of services. So globally, um, there's still 86% of the population using improved uh, drinking water sources in rural areas. Um, and about 6% of those uh, people need to travel um, more, more than 30 minutes uh, to collect the water. So that brings the basic coverage or at least basic services down to 80%. And then you can see these three new elements of uh, safely managed services, whether the water supply is accessible on premises or if water is always available when needed. And then if that water is free from contamination, those are at 60, 72% and 55% in rural areas. So what we do is simply take the, the, the lowest of those, the minimum of them and combine them that way to, to count 55% of the population having safely managed services in rural areas. Now, ideally we would like to combine those three elements um, at the, the household level and we would see a different picture. 
but sometimes the data come from different sources and we're unable to make that kind of combining at the household level. So for instance, often drinking water quality data is only available for the rural areas or the urban areas, or sometimes even only for the national area. So, so that's why we end up taking the minimum of those three. Then if we look at the sanitation ladder, Similarly, open defecation, we will continue to track as, as we did during the MDG period, and there's that direct link to SDG 6.2, um, and use of unimproved sanitation facilities stays the same. But the people who are using improved facilities um, would be counted as having a limited service if that improved facility is shared between two or more households. Um, and this could either be sharing amongst households who know each other or are related, or something all the way up to a, a public um, toilet facility. Then if the, those facilities are not shared, that would count as a basic service, uh, again linked to target 1.4. But if um, those facilities uh, allow that the excreta should be safely disposed of in situ or transported and treated off-site, they would count as a safely managed sanitation service. And really there are three pathways for, for uh, sanitation facilities to be counted as safely managed. And one of them is that the wastewater is treated off-site through sewer connections to treatment plants. But for those who have on-site um, sanitation facilities, well, the excreta could either be treated and disposed of in situ, never leaving um, the, the plot, or they could be emptied, um, for instance, through trucks and treated off-site, either at a fecal sludge treatment plant or co-treatment with, um, with wastewater, with sewage. So those are the new indicators. And again, focusing on the rural area, we can see, first of all, that about one in three people in rural areas used safely managed sanitation services in 2015. But that 35%, we can, we can break up into those three elements and see that 7% of the population was connected with sewers that led to treatment. Uh, and it was actually a much greater population, 28%, that um, safely treated and disposed of their wastes in situ. And unfortunately, there wasn't enough uh, data about um, on-site sanitation systems that are emptied and how those wastes are managed to make an estimate for emptied and treated. And if you work your way up the ladder, you can see that uh, that yellow level, 7% of the population was using limited or shared sanitation facilities, 19% having unimproved, and 24% still practicing open defecation. Now, one thing that we've done for the first time in the report was to distinguish between on-site sanitation and sewer connections. Both of them can lead to safe, safely managed systems, but because the treatment and the, the data sources are different, we, we needed to consider them separately. And it's interesting to see that at the global level, um, really the world is quite evenly split with 38% of the population using on-site systems and another 38% using um, sewer connections. But when you look at different regions, you see a big variation with um, say in Australia and New Zealand, North America and Europe, the great majority of the population having sewer connections, but still significant uh, minorities, usually in rural areas, small communities, having on-site sanitation systems. Whereas in Central Asia, Southern Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Eastern Asia, most people with improved sanitation facilities have on-site systems. So that clearly has implications for how those uh, excreta could be safely managed. And in fact, if we look at the safely managed numbers superimposed, remember at the top here, um, we said that 39% of the population had safely managed sanitation services. Well, 26% of that comes from people with sewer connections and 13% uh, from on-site sanitation systems. But what that really reflects is that there's a lot more data about management of waste in, in sewered systems than there is in non-sewered systems. So we expect that as more data become available about management of on-site sanitation, we could see um, those numbers change a bit. 
So for hygiene, again, we're happy to have hygiene in the framework now. Um, the latter is uh, simpler for hygiene. We, we have um, a basic uh, service level, which is having a hand washing facility on premises in the household with soap and water. If there is some kind of facility, but it lacks soap or water, then that would be counted as a limited service. And those who have no hand washing facilities at all get classed as having no facility. Now, um, even portable equipment would, would count um, as a hand washing facility for, the, for these purposes. Now, the SDGs also place a new focus on leaving no one behind. So it's really important to disaggregate all of these indicators uh, where they're relevant, um, ideally by income or sex or age or all these other, other stratifiers. And importantly, also to see if the rates of progress um, in those different communities are, are such that gaps can be eliminated. So um, that is a nice transition to how the, the database can be explored through our online website. And I'm going to pass over the word to my colleague Rob at UNICEF now. Thank you, Rick. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen green when I get a chance. I think um, we're just transitioning between presenters. Great. Um, and thank you very much to Adirudiasen for hosting this webinar. Um, I'm excited to, to show you our new website. Uh, so let me start by opening it. Um, the new website is called uh, washdata.org. So this, this new website was launched at the same time as the JMP reports um, in uh, June last year. Um, and then we also had some updates uh, later in the year to uh, add some additional functionality. Um, but just uh, taking you through it, um, there's, there's sort of four main sections. So we have data where there's, um, you can get access to, to information for different countries globally and, um, and for regions too. Um, there's a section on reports, um, which is where you can download uh, the baseline report, um, but also additional materials such as the, the methodology we used um, and also I think a lot of interest for the network around washing schools and healthcare facilities. So there's core questions for both of those which fall under SDG monitoring too. Um, there's a section on monitoring where you can get more information about different topics, um, including methods, but also again, institutional wash, inequalities, etc. Um, and there's a section on how the JMP works. So who, who's part of the team um, and how SDG uh, 6, 1 and 2 fit within the rest of um, the SDG monitoring um, and in particular within goal 6. Um, there's also some information on, on regional and country engagement and how the country consultation works. So just remembering that all of the data that the JMP publishes is derived from national data sources and, and there's an extensive consultation around those estimates before they're published. So let's, um, let's take a look at the data. So if I click on here, um, what we get is a summary for the world um, and there's a map over here on, on the right. There's a little question mark here, which if I click on that, gives you a, a brief summary really of the things that can be done on the website. So you can explore and analyze inequalities, create custom charts, and save dashboards and share them, uh, which I think is a really neat new functionality. Um, you can download charts as images so that you can use those in presentations or reports. Um, and you can also create uh, tables and download the data to, to run other analysis um, offline. So if we start by looking on the map and pick a country, let's say we pick Nigeria, and you can see as I hover over, it gives some of the key stats for Nigeria. And if I click, it replaces this summary uh, for the global estimates with data for Nigeria. We can see, for example, here for the national estimates, um, we have an estimate for safely managed um, at around 20% in 2015. Um, and about 48% of the population with a basic service. But if we look at um, data disaggregated by urban and rural, we don't actually have an estimate for safely managed for those two. So quite often, as Rick was saying, 
we we may not be able to disaggregate safely managed uh, depending on um, the source of that data. Um, and we can see uh, that this shows data for drinking water sanitation and hygiene. And we can delve in a bit deeper um, to drinking water sanitation and hygiene. Um, we can also click on the country file button here. Um, and what that does is it downloads more detail about the information. So if I do do that for an individual country, I can get the country file, which I'll just open briefly. Um, and this is um, this has all of the information, um, and it's really a good source if you want to know a lot more about that specific country, including the, the data sources that the JMP used um, and how those are classified. So there's a lot of information in, in the country files. Um, we can also quickly change between countries and make comparisons between neighbouring countries. But I think the, the most exciting, so there's no data from Niger, it seems. That's strange. Um, so I think the most exciting thing is that you can create your own charts. Um, and there are four different types of charts, which um, I'll run you through. And you can do that by clicking on the Create Chart button over here. So for example, if we look at ladders, which is, um, I think, uh, one of the JMP's sort of signature data visualizations and one of the most popular, um, we get the, the global ladders initially, so with 71% um, safely managed in, in 2015 uh, for drinking water. But we can also select rural and we can select urban if we want to make a comparison between those. And we can see that the the figure for safely managed in urban areas is much higher than, than in rural, um, as, as we well know. Um, and that shows the scale of the challenge. Um, we can switch between coverage, so reporting percentages, and look at the populations. So we can see the number of people. Um, we can add labels to these charts. So if we wanted to produce global ladders comparing rural and urban for drinking water. Um, and we can switch back to coverage, keeping those labels. If we wanted to look at trends, um, there's a time period button here. And we can also then add, say, 2000. So if we wanted to look at rural trends, we can see that there's a big increase in the proportion of the population with um, basic services and um, a reduction in the proportion with unimproved, which went down from sort of 20 to 10% globally, which is a huge change. Um, we can also look at uh, service levels. So there's a button, there are these little buttons here where you can analyze by service level, by facility type, um, and also by safely managed criteria. So if I look at safely managed criteria, the three different criteria we can look at are accessibility. So this is whether an improved water source is located on premises. Um, availability, where the water is sufficient. Um, and quality, whether water meets um, standards for, uh, for quality, including E. coli and arsenic and fluoride where relevant. We can also look at um, data on piped versus non-piped water sources. So if we look at, for example, rural pipes, the proportion has gone up quite a bit from 32% to, to 41. But um, as we know, a large proportion of people in rural areas are using non-pipe supplies, and that has also increased. So let's scratch this chart. There's a bin button down here. And let's look at trends. So one of the other chart types, we see it starts with the global sanitation. Um, bear in mind, as Rick said, there's a lot of um, data gaps for safely managed. So this trend that we see here is perhaps less reliable than, uh, for example, the trend for open defecation, where we have uh, comparatively a lot of data. Um, we can switch to rural and see that um, there's still a very large proportion of the population practicing open defecation. 
um, particularly if we start to look at certain SDG regions. So for example, if we look at Central Asia and Southern Asia, um, there's been a huge drop from 68% uh, from to 42, but still a huge way to go. So four out of 10 people in uh, Central and Southern Asia practicing open defecation in rural areas in 2015. Um, if we look at just that section, so if we look at unimproved and open defecation, we can see that there's quite a steady number of people using unimproved sanitation facilities, but open defecation decreasing. If um, I just look at open defecation, we can select, as well as selecting regions, we can pick a particular country. And I'm going to show you Ethiopia because it's quite startling. And we can see the drop in, in Ethiopia um, with all of the efforts that, that went in there from 90% almost to, to 32%. So it's a huge change um, in a relatively uh, short period. Um, and if we switch to, to populations, so we might want to know how many people that corresponds to. We can see that with a growing population, um, it's the the decline is pretty massive. There's 20, 25 million people stop practicing open defecation, but the trend looks very different to when we look at um, percentages of the population. So let's move to another chart type. So this is then two, two out of three, which is a rank chart. And you can hover over these and uh, pick which one you want to, to do. But um, if we look at a rank chart, this is really helpful if you want to um, compare a number of countries or, for example, to look at the top top 10 or bottom 10 for, for different indicators. Um, you'll see that there's quite a lot of options. So this uh, sideboard here is, is more complicated than it was for some of the other charts. Um, it's also a bit overwhelming. So this chart at the moment has far too many countries really to, to make sense of it. So we want to be filtering. But let's uh, let's start by, by looking at hygiene. Um, and we can, rather than ranking by coverage, we could look at population for all countries. And we can see here that there's comparatively few countries for which we have, um, for which we have hygiene estimates, um, and there's 70 countries that had uh, data on, on hand washing with water and soap um, in 2015, but an increasing number of, of countries collecting that data. Um, if we wanted to, for example, look at the bottom uh, bottom 10, you see that there are quite a few countries where um, a very, very small proportion of the population um, have a basic hand washing facility. So huge, lots of countries with, with less than 10%. Um, if we flip to the top, top 10%, we can see that there's a good number of countries as well um, where the majority of the population have, have a basic service. Um, one of the really neat things here is not only can we look at coverage and population, but we can also look at uh, percentage point changes. So if I switch to open defecation again, if I go to sanitation and I look at open defecation, whoops, and remove basic and safely managed. So we're just looking at open defecation. Um, currently ranking countries by the proportion. So Eritrea, Niger, and Chad are the top, top three. Um, but if we wanted to instead look at percentage point changes, so which countries have made the biggest changes. Um, we see here that Djibouti and Madagascar, there's a few countries where um, open defecation has, has actually increased. Um, if we instead look at the bottom 10%, we'll see why I picked out Ethiopia earlier. So Ethiopia with a large reduction, but also several other countries, so Cambodia, Laos, Nepal, with, with huge, huge changes in open defecation. We can also look at um, inequalities by wealth. So 
So for about 80 countries at the moment, um, we have estimates for, for the full water sanitation and hygiene ladder. Um, and we can look at differences between, between richest and poorest quintiles. So these are the, the bottom and top 20% of the population. Um, and here, for example, uh, in, in Zimbabwe, there's a quite a big difference, uh, 73 percentage point difference between richest and poorest. Um, and in Namibia, it goes up to 92%. So the richest really with very little open defecation and almost all of the poorest. There's also a final chart, which is um, called the inequalities chart. So another way of looking at inequalities. And when we load this, um, it always starts with Afghanistan, um, but you can change that. Um, I'm just going to add, so I'm going to switch this to sanitation again, looking at total and open defecation. And if I add Namibia, which we just saw in the last chart, if I can spell it, then what we can see is how different the coverage of open defecation is, or the proportion of the population practicing open defecation in the poorest quintile versus in the richest. So 92% versus virtually zero, which is why we saw that minus 92. Um, and there are some common elements to all of these charts. So you have the ability to switch on numbers if you want them. Um, we can add a title. So if you wanted to say, uh, and I'm going to remove Afghanistan first, and we can do open defecation by wealth quintile in Namibia. So we can create a title along the top. Um, we can download the chart data. So all of the data that's shown in this chart can be downloaded as a CSV file, um, which is really convenient because um, it's it minimizes the amount of information you're downloading. So you get a chart and you want to know just the information in that chart, you can uh, click that button down there. And you can also save this chart, uh, which creates a, a link that you can share with other people. So this is a dashboard that then I can just copy that link um, and I could email that to, to a colleague, for example. Um, the other thing that you can do with dashboards, which is very neat, is you can add multiple charts. So if I've got this um, inequalities chart from Namibia, I might be interested in also showing the sanitation ladder in the same dashboard. So here we have a dashboard with two, two charts. So I can say finished editing, um, and you can resize it and then download an image, which you can then uh, pop into a presentation, for example. So I think that's a, that's a brief overview then of um, the, the functionality of the website. Um, you've already heard about the, the, the new indicators, um, and I'd really encourage you to, to have a look on this website, um, make, make good use of it, uh, particularly let us know if you have any any feedback um, on that. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, we will be very happy to receive those um, on this call, but also uh, afterwards.